friends. I got another limited edition from R.D. Marie Paints, Ryan D. Marie Paints. Yes, Egyptian Blue is a historic color, and this is one of his limited edition batches, which means he hand draws his little logo and label, and I kind of love that from a crafting point of view. But yes, Egyptian Blue is a historic color. I have my window open. You'll hear New York City noises. Um, that the ancient Egyptians invented about four-ish thousand years ago. Yeah, for a while we weren't really sure what was in Egyptian Blue, um... But from what I understand, Egyptian blue over the course of history, the G ancient Egyptians used it, then the ancient Romans used it, then the ancient Greeks used it, and then we kind of forgot about it for a little bit, and then it became ultramarine blue. Um, but back then, ultramarine blue was actually lapis lazuli, because that's what it was made of. The Egyptian blue, the only way to get blue, really, was to get it from lapis lazuli and turn it into a pigment. And in the late 1870s, I want to say, we got the synthetic ultramarine blue, which we have today, and that's why we have lapis lazuli and ultramarine blue. And we just kind of phased out the name Egyptian blue um, for reasons, I guess. But yes, Egyptian blue, every single ancient Egyptian artifact in the museum that has any blue on it, that's Egyptian blue. And fun fact, it's also infrared for some reason. But this is a U, made to look like the historical one, not to look like modern lapis lazuli, which I will not be using as a comparison, by the way, because this is expensive. We actually don't really use lapis lazuli all too much because it is expensive to make, and we have more synthetic, uh, cheaper options, and yeah. So, I'll, Egyptian blue. Here's all the information. It's non-toxic. He has his pigments on it. PB63, PB6, PB, PW18, PW24, walnut oil. Yes, um, he still has a few bottles of this, by the way, but we're going to compare it to actual modern synthetic ultramarine blue. We're going to mix it with the yellow to see what kind of green we got. And I have his business card, if you want to, like, yeah. I'm going to show that again at the end, but yes, we are going to put down the Egyptian blue first. He hand makes all of his paint in what I can only assume is like a garage or something, because making oil paint is very toxic, very difficult, and that is pretty as heck. And we are going to put a little, oh, yep. His paints do tend to have a little bit of a more oily consistency and a little bit what I want to call stringy. But I kind of like that. I use his Railger U all the time nowadays. And I'm like, that is nice. A little bit on the transparent side, but that is a nice little blue. We're going to have a little bit of a close-up on it, because that is a nice, yes, not quite pastel, but it's like a sky blue. This is good for skies. Yes. I have decided this. I will definitely be using it for that. We're going to mix it with a little bit of just titanium white from Michael Harding, because it's the first one I pulled out of my big pile of white paints. And a car has gone by. You are going to hear noises. We're gonna... Whoop. I actually really like Ryan Demery paints. It takes a lot of care to make each of them very special, and I can appreciate that. He has no idea I exist. This is not sponsored. This is just me buying his paint off eBay and then doing this with it. And yeah. Yeah. That's nice. Now we gotta clean off the palette knife. It's just good oil paint. Garbage noises. But we should put a bit more out to put the yellow and see what green we get. Keep in mind, this is all handmade oil paint. This is not from a company. He doesn't have an industrial mill, I don't think. So the paint is not going to be super, super up there with the big brands. But that being said, I can appreciate the craft. I can appreciate the attempt. And let's face it, there are some very big companies with the industrial mills that are complete garbage. Come on. And sometimes you just want to have, like, paint that was made authentically. And, like, whoop. Scraping noises. Yes. That's a nice green. Whoop. Now we clean off the palette knife again. We are not comparing it to Lapis Lazuli. I'm not sure there's much of a point. I think we can get 
you know, what it looks like compared to general ultramarine blue from Williamsburg. Because for some reason I have a bunch of French ultramarine and ultramarine deep, but this is the only standard ultramarine that I have for some reason. And this is made to be more lighter, to match more the what's in the museums, to match what you actually see on the artifacts. And ultramarine is like, gonna be darker. It's just gonna be. That's just how it is. And we're going to mix it with a little bit of white. Probably a lot of white. There we go. There we go. Doo, doo, doo. You're going to get a completely different tone. Because sky blue, like this part of sky blue, is very tricky to mix naturally. What you get from ultramarine and all the modern synthetics are more of a darker thing. This is more of a king's blue, but I don't have any king's blue on hand, I don't think, to really compare it against. But it's definitely a much lighter tone, but now you see it against ultramarine blue, so you know exactly what you're going to get compared. So you see it on your monitor, and we are going to mix this with some green anyway, some yellow anyway, to get a green. You know what I'm saying. Garbage noises. We got some ultramarine blue. Look, come on, close the bottle. Yeah, close it successfully. We got a little bit of yellow. If it will come out of the bottle. These little bottles, by the way, you can actually um, ask Williamsburg from their website. They have a drop down menu and you get these little bottles for free. You won't all oh, you can't guarantee the colors you're going to get, but you will get something. Um, that's just an aside. That is a much darker green because of course it is because it's a darker blue. But you know what? We are here. So we are going to mix some lapis lazuli anyway because I have the bottle right here and I know it's very expensive, but I'm too afraid to use it normally because it's expensive. Got some solidified oil. Ooh. It will come, it will close eventually. <laughs> this cost me a lot of money, this single bottle. Yeah. And I mentioned in an earlier video how Lapis Lazuli has a shine to it that you definitely aren't, it's, it feels gritty because it's made of actual rocks. It's made of lap Lapis Lazuli stone. And it has a shine to it that definitely synthetics are not picking up. And it is a different shade from ultramarine. That being said, this color is anywhere between $80 and $130. So, your mileage may vary on how badly you want it. Um, there are rumors that some really big artists like Leonardo da Vinci just didn't finish some pieces because he couldn't get enough lapis lazuli to finish some works. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. making a scraping noise. That was too much white, but that's okay. You get the idea. I don't think we need to mix a green. I'm not wasting any more lapis lazuli on that. Um, But yes, actual lapis lazuli. Shiny. Not quite the same shade, but it's not intended to be. Egyptian blue is intended to match more the artifacts in the museums, the tone that they got, rather than actual modern synthetics or actual lapis lazuli. And you know what? I can appreciate that. This is fantastic for skies, fantastic for a lot of more subtle tones that the synthetics cannot get. And grass, look at how bright that is. Um, yeah, actual lapis lazuli. Fantastic, but I'm terrified to actually use it anywhere because that is an expensive color. So, anyway, it's from Ryan the Marie Paints, and this is his he painted this with actual mummy brown i think that was his thing and he had the painting for sale for a while and now he has a pdf book of stuff about mummy brown but yeah that's his website he has the ebay that's where i get all my things i don't know what blurb is what is blurb i don't know um but yes this is his stuff this is not sponsored this is just just me i just buy it i just buy his paint he posts limited edition and my goblin brain says yes i must have it so yeah that's my little review on Egyptian blue, blue you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We're going to just end it over here. Thank you. Have a good day. Goodbye, everybody.